Hello and welcome to Garcast. This week we decided to have a bit of a filler episode. Um, thought we'd discuss what got us into the wonderful medium that we talk about. Um, as usual, with us is Boris. Hello. Eleanor. Hello. And Tom. Yeah, good day. Um, so, who wants to start, I guess? Well, you're hosting us, you can lead the way. Um, oh, mine's really boring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, like... Um, oh, this is going to be few years. Um, beginning of high school, so, like, 2009. Um, my... A good friend of mine um, was starting to get into Naruto, like, the manga. And um, so I essentially just um, got into that with him and pretty much just read that for a few years. Then um, on a whim, I think I just picked up like um, the anime of it and then just binged all of that that was in English, I think. And then moved on um, to, I think, I think it must have been like Attack on Titan when that came out, but I moved on to that. And then got a load of friends into it, and it was just essentially, like, each of us getting into different shows. Um, Mm. And then... That's it, really, for, like, the general, actual beginnings of it. I was wondering how you you all, like, initially got started into it. I mean, there's obviously more in how I developed, but... We can get to that in a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in my case, I'm uh, not even sure if I can count that, but um, that would start like probably me being like three or four years old with the um, yeah European uh, Japanese co-productions uh, mm-hmm. that they had. Uh, for example, uh, Vicky the Viking, um, like the B Maya. I don't know how it's called in English. Probably um, Alfred Judoka's Quack, which was the like a very cute little duck uh, anime. And these were all like either. For example, German Japanese co-productions, Netherlandish Japanese, and so these were all like seventies shows that were still having reruns, and so mm. like a whole generation uh, grew up on them. Um, but they had a sort of very Western feel to them, um, but uh, sort of a more anime-ish style. Um, but I remember really loving them, especially uh, Vicky the Viking, which probably also uh, spurned my love for everything Scandinavian culture-ish. <laughs> Because I think it's based on a Swedish children's book, I think. Um, yeah, but uh, which probably also led to my love of One Piece later on. Because uh, as Oda tells in one of his um, like uh, SPS, SPS fan pages, that uh, One Piece is based upon or sort of he got the idea from Vicky the Viking. And if you know about that, then you will find a few uh, like parallels. For example, that the the uh, little Viking, like the Viking's son, uh, gets his first helmet from his dad, and it's like sort of the same way uh, that uh, Ruffy, uh, Luffy Luffy gets his uh, straw hat. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, the, these were like Viking adventures, like sort of episodic thing that had, a, but also reoccurring villains and was a sort of uh, like episodic show, but uh, had some bigger arcs uh, in them. So. Uh, even then, you you could already see the like sort of shonen-y, uh structures that the inspiration that it was drawing mm-hmm. from the shonen, yeah, exactly. Uh, so these were like very early beginnings, like uh, even before elementary school, like probably th- th- age three to five. Uh, but then uh, I got into manga, like uh, then especially One Piece. No, wait. Um, they, uh, German television had a, a block, uh, like an afternoon block of, um, Yu-Gi-Oh, like the, the first one, uh, One Piece, uh, Detective Conan, or I think Case Closed, it's called in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sort of like, the, like very classic shows, like, um, I think I missed the time of Sailor Moon and, uh, Dormy, I think it was just a hint before my time. Uh, but I wasn't into these uh, like magical girl shows uh, either. But I just remember them uh, existing. So uh, yeah, so so I would say like the, the the very first phase. Then the second phase was these uh, like afternoon blocks of anime that I watched, uh, and that got me into the uh, which got me into manga because I then noticed wait a second, this One Piece show is based on a book, 
and the book is already out and I can read that so I don't have to wait for another episode. And then I just stormed onwards and read all of the One Piece mangas that were released until that day, which was somewhere around Water 7. Uh, and then sort of, yeah, I jumped into anime from there. Uh, but I only found a few things on the internet, so... Yeah, the, uh, most of my uh, like teenage years are uh, reading manga. And then really back into anime, I got, I think it's around 2013, which was the hype of Attack on Titan, mm-hmm. which was all over the place and was, I think, uh, completely impossible to escape. Yeah, and, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I thought, well, this looks interesting. I haven't been really into anime lately. Just could probably watch that. And it completely blew me away, um, probably because I hadn't seen the recent evolvings uh, of anime. And this is why I, I hold Attack on Titan a bit close to my heart. I know that it's not the best show out there, but it, it pulled me back into the medium. So uh, I can, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and I have a soft spot for it still. I'm very excited for season two. Um, yeah, but so of... Uh, up until 2013, I then got back into stuff and checked out seasonals, checked out a few classics that I missed uh, over the years. And yeah, since then, uh, I'm there here. Hmm. Cool stuff. For for me, it was pretty similar to yours, Elena, <laughs> where it was that one um, afternoon block where we had stuff like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Yu-Gi-Oh! And of course, mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z, which eventually became... Oh, yeah the best thing ever for me back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was around the time I think I was for the first time made aware of anime as a term and that it's all from Japan and all of these things that I like are from the same place. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the longest time it was just me watching whatever was on German television like except for Sailor Moon, because you can't watch Sailor Moon if you're a boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then there was, weirdly enough, there the music channels on German television, MTV. And oh yeah, MTV had um, anime as well, like late in the evening, like Wolf's yeah, Rain and they had Helsing. late night stuff, like, mm-hmm. well, Helsing, uh, Cowboy Bebop was, there is, that was the first oh, time I, I watched that. that. Um, they had guns, which was <laughs> very <laughs> different. <laughs> Hyperviolence and all that. Um, what else? Yeah, Helsing, Escaflone, Samurai Champloo is also there. Um, oh, the I first... completely missed that, sadly. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get back in time. Watch all of that. Cowboy Bebop was worth it. And... Mm. The first anime I think I saw out that was not just on television was probably Gurren Lagann, which was mm-hmm. just on YouTube back in the day, because you could just find an entire anime series on YouTube back then. Yeah. <laughs> um, from then on, I just kind of watched a show here and not here then, like random stuff that I just found on whatever sites. Uh, my friends got really into Naruto around that time. I never actually had the patience to watch all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know remarkably a lot about Naruto for someone who has never watched it. <laughs> um, what was the next thing? Oh yeah, and basically the same as for you. It was 2013. Attack on Titan <laughs> <laughs> was uh, the first time I was aware of seasonals and watching stuff as it was airing which is also why I as well have a soft spot for Attack on Titan Um, (laughs) and that was also when I made my animalist account and it's all downhill from there (laughs) (laughs) well I guess I'm gonna break from the mold a little bit Um, I start off in a fairly similar sense you know back home, Ireland, watching things like um, Zoids, uh, which was on TV, got the UK airing of Zoids, and uh, Digimon, 
Oh yeah, Digimon is yeah. Nice. yeah, which I watched at like three, four years old, I think I was. And then we moved over here and I saw Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was about five or six and we got the cards as kids and we had no idea how to play, but <laughs> we loved the show and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I never had any knowledge that it was from Japan. And then aside from seeing like the odd Pokemon thing, I didn't see like any anime. Oh, and some more Digimon. Um, in between there, I didn't really see anything that was anime. And then it wasn't until 2012, uh, sorry, 2011, where a whole bunch of friends of mine were sort of in intermediate school, and they were watching the show called Naruto, which was on mm-hmm. late at night on like Cartoon Network, I think it was. Um, same thing, I wasn't able to stay out that late, I had a stricter family, so I read Naruto uh, on a Kindle, the Kindle web browser, I would read Naruto on that. Uh, mm-hmm. which was a little bit funny. And then for, for about a year, I just read all kinds of manga. So I read things like Elfin Lead and Toradora and Naruto, and I tried things like One Piece and Bleach and bits and pieces like that. And then ending towards the end of 2012, a couple of my friends were really into the show that was airing online. This show's name was Sword Art Online. <laughs> And that is how I got into anime. (laughs) That's tragic. It is tragic. Um, So while I don't hold quite the same fondness for Sword Art Online as you guys might hold for Attack on Titan, I don't (laughs) hate it outright because it's what introduced me to this medium, like above everything else. And from there, um, because internet was rubbish here until the last couple of years, I would get a lot of my shows via flash drive for a friend would give them to me. And these were shows I had like no idea what they were. (laughs) So sort of my first two years of proper anime watching was a weird mix of things because he'd get these like weird like mid 2000s short series of like adaptions of light novels or visual novels or whatever that were always like kind of weird and janky. So I got this kind of skewed perception of what anime was until I was able to get into proper streaming and sort of see what more of it was out there. Mm -hmm. Mm. And then I suppose I could talk about sort of my middle years until now, if we want to get into that stuff. Yeah, Yeah, Mm -hmm. so 2013, was it 2014, 2015? I was very, very ill uh, for a long time. Uh, with scarlet fever and even when i was past that i was still getting ill because i had a lot of uh, a pretty poor immune system so then i would stay at home all day and feel like playing games and feel like doing schoolwork and feel like talking to people so i would watch anime naturally i wanted to watch shows that made me feel a bit happier so for about two years all i watched was shock horror surprise traitor tom watch cutesy moe shows pretty much <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> How dare you! Top 10 anime for trails. Um, <laughs> Moe on the Garcast! <laughs> How did this happen? We have but a yeah. mole. <laughs> and then, I think it was late 2015. No, no, it was early 2015. Yes, yeah, early 2015. Uh, we went off on a trip for biology class to do some stuff. Was it 2016? No, early 2015. I uh, went off on a trip for biology class, and I'd sort of seen this episode of this kind of show, and we all sort of sat down for the night, and I was like, I want to watch this. So me and four other people all huddled around under a blanket around a laptop, uh, booted a crunchy roll, and we watched the first few episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. And we all had, like, a blast until, you know, the teacher came in and busted us for being up late watching stuff online. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, and then that's how I sort of... I'd watched other shows and stuff before that. Like, I had just started watching Mecha because I'd got in my head that Mecha was bad for some reason before then. I don't know. Um, And I'd seen shows like... 
<laughs> <laughs> and I'd seen shows like Bebop and Shampoo and all those other kinds of things. And I realized I liked those a lot more and was a lot more engaged with them than these slice of life shows or these more Maui cutesy shows because I, I felt more invested and more excited by them. And then, well, shit, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are. Hmm. Like we can all talk about the the sins of our past, <laughs> taste wise, <laughs> if we want to, but uh, I want to take just just a little uh, detour because what I noticed is that every one of us has somehow a relation to Naruto, um, for, <laughs> oh, yeah. as a sort of pull in uh, thing uh, for for me as well. Naruto um, is the key but... to all of this. <laughs> he has been pulling strings all along, um, uh, but. Uh, I think this could be interesting because I think it has become an internet joke that is the German opening of the oh, Naruto God. anime. <laughs> and uh, I can tell the tale because I was there. Believe it. I <laughs> Naruto, believe it. And I saw Hell, that on television. It. <laughs> <laughs> it was there and I think you can't find these episodes because not only was the OP I think not that we have to take a second detour. Like, um, because it was an afternoon block where also Naruto aired with all these other shows like One Piece, Wii Wii and such, um, they had to be uh, edited, so sort of a cut a bit. But in One Piece case, it was just that the super bloody scenes were removed. But it was all uh, it was, sweat it, it instead of blood. Fun. Like everyone uh, again, was sweating a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but they didn't do any edits, so it was just a, um, like cut in, in some places. Um, but it didn't disturb me back then, and so even the the manga was uh, looked even more beautiful in my eyes because oh, it has violence in it. Um, uh, but sort of they, they weren't edited. That that is my point. They didn't do anything with the picture; they just removed scenes. But with the Naruto anime uh, that ran in the same block, they were retouched, uh, how, how do you say, um, like redrawn, uh, and really, really badly. And the thing is that I can't find these redone episodes on the internet anymore, because I would love to show them. It was the fight um, where the, our three guys, Konoha team, have to take down uh, Kakashi. Uh, and um, he makes an illusion that uh, Sakura sees Sasuke like completely beaten up and uh, like uh, with, with all this sort of stuff sticking out of him, um, and sort of he looks really bad. Uh, this scene I remember it seeing on television was looked like it had been repainted with Microsoft Paint, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, like geez. some like someone took the normal blue that you find in Microsoft Paint and just scribbled it all over Sasuke's blue shirt. Like, it looked really bad. Like, uh, I, and back then, even, I thought, like, wait a second, that does look awful. And, it, and I don't know why Naruto was the only thing that got this treatment, because none of the other got it. Uh, like, so, yeah. Because I remember I watched... Oh, uh, sorry. I watched, like... Uh, a couple of episodes of Naruto with friends here, and so we got the American edits, which were which were fairly decently decent quality, just a little awkward at times. So like, rather than cut a scene of someone smoking, they would just like paste a kunai over them. <laughs> so oh, <okay>. <laughs> it looked a little bit <laughs> weird. And then yeah, yeah, at times you would get like weird painting errors with the background as they sort of would got like the wrong color or didn't get the shading right and it'd be like hang on but it was generally pretty good yeah and i still don't know why naruto was the only one that got treated so so badly because that, that was taken off the air then pretty quickly and uh, because of the huge backlash that happened mm. um and and then they, they just had a, a dvd release uh, which uh, specifically said on the cover like 100 percent uncut and and stuff um, and then I think Shippuden was the one who really came back. Because I don't remember Naruto running properly on television. Wasn't but Naruto all, uh, also edited to no one could say the word kill in the German version? <laughs> I think oh. that was also oh. something that yes, bothered yes, my yes, friends yes, back yes. then. 
Yes, what did I remember the thing? There was the fight Gara versus um, Sasuke, um, where he hits through the sand barrier, and I think he says uh, normally. I think in the Japanese version, he screams, "My blood! That's my blood!" Uh, uh, and the German one was terribly awkward. I don't know what he says. Uh, what is, ah, I remember now. The, ah, it's coming back now. Help! <laughs> flashbacks. Uh, yeah. I yes, remember that I remember no, no one could ever get killed in Naruto. You could only get defeated. Yes, yeah. uh, I remember it. <laughs> it was, um, Kakashi said something. Um, it was like, uh, if we're going to fail on this mission, we could get killed. That was the Japanese dub. But um, in the English, in the German one, it was, uh, if, we, uh, if we fail this mission, it's going to be really bad. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, but, but the reaction shots are still the same. So everyone reacts to the words, this is going to be bad, like really over the top. <laughs> it's, oh God, I, re- I completely forgot about all of these things. Oh, my geez. God, why? <laughs> also like the one screenshot where they edited out uh, Sabusa's sword, where it's like oh, lodged yeah. in a tree. And in the German version, he's just standing on nothing in the middle of the <laughs> yes. air. Uh, I think that one is quite well known as well. Is that that I have seen on? Is that is uh, that where it comes shot. from? Damn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the equivalent of the American One Piece for Kids version is the the German Naruto version. <laughs> oh dear. That sounds interesting. See, I never experienced that because I didn't have um, cable at home until I was about eight. So never really saw anything on TV when I was really young. Um, I think the most would have been like. Pokemon, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even that was like 10 that I was, how old I was. So really young exposure to it was pretty much non-existent. It was all like VHS tapes that we had that were just like really old Western cartoons and like children's shows. So, oh, really? Yeah. No, because we, um, um, uh, just in Clonmel in Ireland, we got some bbc channel and that was where i watched like i said zoids and digimon all right yeah <laughs> we never had that because <laughs> like i mean maybe it's just because the only bbc channels we had access to were bbc one and bbc two for about well i don't know eight years or so so oh wow <laughs> and and then they discontinued the service so we had to get cable um, well you and even the then tv was, license yeah and even then it was like Freeview, so you didn't really have that many channels, even though it looked like loads. And then that's how I got like a lot of the children's channels. Um, so that's where I would have seen like Pokemon. I think I saw some Yu Gi Oh! Actually, now um, that you mention it, we've mm-hmm. got I've got a Freeview box now, which you need yeah. here because they discontinued the analog TV like two yeah. years ago, which was pretty recently. Um, all right. But there's, because it's here in New Zealand, there's a Maori TV channel. And they, of course, they air a lot of stuff just in English as well. And air different kinds of things. But they've dubbed a few things into Maori. And one of the ones <laughs> right. I saw the other day was a Maori dubbed One Piece, which was fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they did a surprisingly good job, because Maori is a pretty limited language. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably ask that one day. What is the Maui word for devil fruit? Devil fruit? I don't know. Um, uh, you, you you could, like, write comparisons to it. <laughs> but, like, yeah. I could figure it out. My Maori is pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> rusty anyway. I didn't take it through high school, so... Like, uh, we wanted to talk about the sins <laughs> of our past. <laughs> we, we, we dodged it very nicely. Oh, yeah, you guys. Oh. Uh, Tom already has taught us his tragic backstory. I've exposed myself. I'm gonna get kicked <laughs> off Garcast. <laughs> the articles well, written about mine's, me. Mine's no better, really. Welcome to the final episode with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I can continue because obviously, like I said, it was essentially just me and a few friends giving each other shows to watch, like recommending. One of my friends um, was, and I think he still is. Um, really into like light novel shows like the kind of typical light novel shows um so he would always recommend them to us so we would watch them and eventually some friends like decided nah 
his recommendations are awful, so let's not listen to it. But I thought, <laughs> I'll be nice and I'll go watch whatever he recommends. So all of my, like, a load of my early stuff is really bad. Like, I obviously like Elf and Lead, like, kind of, well, I guess that's a manga, really, but, like, that kind of show. Mm-hmm. But then also, like, uh, because that period was when the science magic harem academy kind of shows came in so it was a lot of those (laughs) and it was like hey watch this he's like haven't i watched this no 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 i haven't (laughs) i was like oh no this one has the other fetish yeah (laughs) okay (laughs) well i've got an hour i can watch this no but then also other shows like the kind of typical entry level stuff was always recommended like death note and Kogias, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got really into like watching YouTube that I really found other shows. So like I wouldn't have got into things like JoJo if it wasn't for um like getting YouTube recommendations and that kind of thing. Well I like so, my a lot of my recommendations came from I signed up to Hummingbird and I used it sort of quite distantly for a while to keep track of the shows I was watching. And then I saw one day, oh, they have this thing, this chat. What's a Discord? Um, so that was the end of 2015, I think, is when I signed up for Discord and through Hummingbird. It's sort of where I got to do stuff. And then, of course, I sort of found some YouTubers and watched the videos, and they all have Discord things as well. So now I mm. more and more people. Met some cool people, yeah. And then, there were, then there was an anime Twitter. Everything's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Worst place on earth. Oh Some god, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's just awful. It's only the birthplace of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, that probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's uh, interesting how um, uh, essentially anime leads itself to a, a community. It's sort of a sort of very nerdy thing. Because you have to live off of recommendations and uh, just discussions, because it is just so vast uh, to to find your way through it. Because every season there's like the tons of shows, and probably in the beginnings you you don't know what to look for and stuff. You probably just want to see like what what are my friends watching? What is this person watching that I follow? Um, and so Got yeah, a- I think this is how the same way I found like two one of my favorite shows that I didn't like at the beginning, shock horror, uh, Kill la Kill and uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Like, uh, I'm going to out myself here as well. I dropped Jojo's Bizarre Adventure after, I think, two or three episodes. Oh, dear. Oh, yes, dear. and, and then came back because awful. everyone talked about <laughs> it. And Kill la Kill as well, because I was taken aback by the fan service and think, no, this is not my kind of show. And uh, I think I... But, uh, past, Elena, what were you thinking? You, you dropped these two. And uh, I only got back because people talked about them positively and I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to give them another chance. And now they are just in my top 10 of favorite shows. I, I've been thinking the entire past 10 minutes about what would I define as a sin of the past. And I'm Boris not still quite have one. sure. <laughs> I think my taste was always flawless. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, the, the weirdest one is... I think Dragon Ball Z for me, because I've turned around on it so hard as I got older, because it used to be my favorite show. It it was the favorite show of everyone I knew. And mm-hmm. I mm. eventually just came to realize, like, this is kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is not great. Um, Mm, I've else? had that for um, uh, as we were talking back then you could find uh, anime on YouTube yeah. um, I watched an OVA that I just stumbled upon it and I don't know why um, Boku Sensei Tenshi Dokuro-chan the bludgeoning angel oh, Dokuro-chan yeah, that one. <laughs> um, there oh. was probably a lot of hype around it back then the problem is I remember sitting on my laptop and laughing my ass off because I thought it was absolutely funny um, because th- probably it was my, my first uh, exposure to meta jokes and sort of anime making fun about, about itself. And I remember uh, really liking the first OVA, the second one, wow, not so much. And then I rewatched that just probably like a few weeks ago, and I just sat stone faced in front of my PC, <laughs> going, my God, 
this is awful. This is terrible. This is absolutely <laughs> not funny. What is this? What am I watching? Uh, and I only made it through episode one. And I think to myself, how? Why? <laughs> how did this happen? <laughs> like, yeah, th- this would be probably my sin of the past. Like, th- you can see just how taste evolves, really. Mm-hmm. That uh, I found this so super funny. And then I would just think now this is just uh, a standard meta joke. Like, ooh. Oh the, yeah, this is like a romance anime. <laughs> the, the the day uh, anime starts making meta jokes about meta jokes, that's when they'll be funny again. Uh, but <laughs> until then, uh, it's, for a it's, while, it's a trope at this point in in anime. Yeah. Yes, I also remember uh, Helsing catering really strongly to the edgy sixteen year old in me. <laughs> well, that's what fought out short online and catered really hard to the uh, edgy fourteen year old in me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a terrible edge lord. I like to forget about that. Oh, you that's part of being a teenager though, is being a shitty edge lord. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how, but I somehow found my way around Elfen Lead and Helsing during my teenage years. Um but they they sort of always lingered in the back of my head, sort of yeah, I should, should watch that. No wait, I saw no, 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 it gets more complicated. Uh, where I saw did, where the... did everyone in the German community catch Elfen Lead? Because I never saw that anywhere. But it seems yes, to be I... popular here. I think just because of the German name. I think because the Elfen Lead quite simply means Elven Song. Uh, and you see a an anime with a German name and you probably say, oh, I should, should watch that. Uh, we also have a complete like collector's edition manga release. And I don't know why. That, like it sort of is like super popular over here, and like yeah, I saw I think like the first one, the, the first episode, and thought like yeah, this is violence, good. I don't I don't know why I watched the, the <laughs> didn't watch the rest of it. Uh, I think Helsing I saw like the first three OVAs because I think that was everything that was released, and liked them, and then I did the mistake of watching Elfen Lead and Helsing uh, like a few months ago. Ah, mm. <laughs> didn't like them at all. Just it's painful, but uh, I forced myself through them. I said I'm going to watch them both from beginning to end, and it was dreadful. The, like you can feel the edginess that like coming at you. Oh, like yeah. all, all of it. Well, like, was and it, it hits you in the, the face. The original Helsing or the oh no, um, ultimate. the ultimate, the ultimate. Um, because well, that one's I supposed the... to be a bit better, but. Oh no! <laughs> it doesn't work. Help! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed uh, like a few things that I would probably have, would have glanced over whenever I would have been a teenager. Like uh, Elf and Lead, everybody remembers the like very violent and awful things that happen, but there's just a lot of sitting around and talking about nothing for a yeah. lot of episodes. That sounds familiar. That sounds a lot like uh, Gantz for me. Because it was also like ultra violence that I caught for the first time in Guns mm. in the first episode, but then you watch the rest of it and it's like so slow paced, and people are just standing around, thinking what they should do next. But I don't know. I guess the violence was enough to draw me in back then. Doesn't work mm-hmm. today. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess that's kind of the same with um, Attack on Titan, especially if you consider, like, at least with Naruto, it's, like, magic. So, uh, where Attack on Titan had that almost realism of it being, like, blade on skin and things being ripped apart. So that was kind of like, I mean, I guess I would have been 16 when that came out, or 15, I can't remember. What year was it it came out? 2013? Naruto? Or Uh, Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan. Oh, yeah. Attack on Titan. Uh, Yeah, so it must have been probably, like... Yeah, it was the 2013. Yeah, so there was definitely that kind of, like, oh god, this is really edgy and really violent. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, so I guess it, all of us have had that appeal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a completely new world once you realize you can have a cartoon with violence. In yeah. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think in, uh, in Attack on Titan's case, I think it was just that it was bombastic. Mm. Um, the it, it, the, oh. the presentation of it was just splendid. I remember watching it, just... it, and it was um, Saturday late one night, 
and I binged from like the first until the twentieth episode until I fell asleep because it it ends like every episode on something of a cliffhanger and one run through mm -hmm. that's great you want to yeah. see more but I I attempting to go back at all it's tedious because you know what's going to happen but the episode finishes itself in a weird place to try and draw you to the next one it sort of comes off mm -hmm. across as feeling a little bit inconfident in its writing <laughs> to make you come back normally <laughs> I am very curious how I'm going to feel about Attack on Titan Season 2, because it's been four years, and yes. I think well, like, my, my taste changed a bit, so it's yeah. going to be real interesting. I know. I mean, so like, been... Sorry. No, go ahead. Well, sorry, like, go ahead. So a lot of people that I know that watched Attack on Titan either watched it and moved on because there was no Season 2 for them, or if they did get into anime they are past the point where they want to watch more attack on titan so it's it's mm, it's okay. taken probably a little too long <laughs> to come out to be <laughs> oh, yeah, quite yeah. as much of a smash hit as it was it's in the west been really badly marketed yeah yeah but, but i know i know a couple of friends i was like hey there's a second season that's coming out uh next season of the anime and they're like oh yeah i might might check it out because they have decently fond memories of the first season so yeah the second one's going to have some good moments. At least the the, the Titan wrestling match is going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know anything about the season two. I just yeah, uh, thought, okay, I'm going to uh, just go in completely blind. I barely remember anything of the manga, really. Uh, I've read a bit of the manga. The, but I remember I, the big um, hairy Titan. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But I don't remember very much else. I know there's like quite a few twists, but the details of them I can't remember at all. Well, a lot of the later stuff just switches into human politics and <laughs> infighting and shit like that. Mm. And I'm not sure if that's what I want to get out of Attack on Titan. No, not really. But we'll I, I see. Just, but, but I, I'll, I'll come for the, the hype and the soundtrack for, for all of the animation. Because it just looked really good. I was also recently informed that the basements the twist the huge mystery around that was revealed in the manga recently and apparently yeah, it's don't, worth don't, it don't, 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 don't. no not in the podcast i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil it but it's just people said that it's worth it and that's kind of a miracle all right okay oh it's good okay oh, it's, it's <laughs> I've, heard good the, I've heard that like i dropped the manga ages ago but i heard that it really dropped in like even if you enjoy the series like the quality had really dropped but it's promising to hear that at least it's worth it. So I guess I'll, I might get back into it, but <laughs> I heard that it dropped considerably, even by people I know who like it. So, so I know there was a lot of, like, disdain for it because the guy who writes it, like, changed the ending because it got popular. And people were like, okay, yeah, fair yeah, enough. It, it, it was <laughs> supposed to only run for like 20 vol volumes or something. Yeah, and everyone was going to die at the end. And then oh. he realized it was popular and was like, oh, well, I can't do that. <laughs> so, Not while well, I can milk so this shit. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> it's the same with other long-running shonen manga. Mm, true. Uh, probably my favorite being One Piece again there. Because uh, I remember reading um, that he said he wanted One Piece to run, I think, something like five years at maximum. And so he outlined, outlined the complete story already. Uh, so we will find, like, in very early artwork already, like, Boa Hancock and different characters, like, standing in the back. Um, but then had so many ideas and was so successful but he said it was more like that he was getting more and more ideas so that he put islands between things and just everything spanned out so far <laughs> that he said oh oops now it's running for how long like 20 years it's 20 yeah, years, it's like, 20 years. <laughs> like yeah so, so but, but but i like this that he already has everything in place and it just has gotten bigger so like if you are reading one piece you really notice like this is a very concise like tightly knit story just because it already was in place and just got bigger. So it was not like he had to make up more things. Well, One Piece mm. has the advantage that it's kind of built for that. Yeah. You, yes. you can always go to a new island and have a new adventure. That's the entire thing. Mm -hmm. 
But I guess the key advice here is if you're writing a story, plan out the entire thing. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I Going back to the days where I used to read a lot of sort of amateur authors online, be it fan fiction or original works, and so so many of them, you go back and they never finished because they had no clear outline. They just wanted to do their their edgy little sort of self insert fantasy story. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so, so that runs for however long it runs, and it either gets really aimless and everyone stops reading it, or they just stop it because <laughs> they don't know where they're mm-hmm. going and they don't have any motivation to do it. So it's it's very rare that you do find one that's gone on for a long time. And while it might still be dragging, they still have motivation to finish it. And they're, you know, they're all right stories. <laughs> but yeah, having a concise end goal does help your, your plot a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems so obvious, but so many writers miss the mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that weird that weird thing about ending a story. Mm. I sure hope Miura has an ending for Berserk Plant. <laughs> Miura's Berserk will end with Miura's death, in which he releases a will that's just a picture of guts <laughs> flipping everyone off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just needs to to write down some notes on a piece of paper and put it somewhere where someone can find it after his death. <laughs> Initiate a One Piece style treasure hunt for the end of Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same with, um, what's his name, Tagashi, um, the Hunt Hunter guy, that, like, oh, that'll man. probably end with his death. But then he, like, from what I've heard, his work schedule during, like, Yu Yu Hakusho was insane. Like kind of odor level, and like only odor can deal with an odor level kind of work schedule, <laughs> and I think that just destroyed him. And it comes to him trying to write another. I mean, I don't know how how long was the original manga for Yu Hakusho? That, yeah, that was a monster of probably, a thing. Yeah, like I think Hunt Hunter might actually be longer than that was now, and I don't, from what I hear from people who read it, like it's nowhere near ending yet. So. <laughs> Or they could like, do a bleach and just end it whenever. Yeah. <laughs> just, hey, 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 Kuba, can you end it soon, please? Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah sure. Kuba only wanted to end it, like, we, ten Kuba, years we... prior. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, let me do this final arc. I feel like... It's like, yeah, we asked you three years ago, could you end it? So it's like, oh, yeah, sure. O- Oda has probably ruined other manga writers' lives. What's because like? the editorial of Shonen Jump is probably just like, well... This is the most successful manga, and the author can churn out the chapter every <laughs> week consistently, so everyone else should be able to do it, right? Except they're not. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like Naraki <laughs> stepped like down <laughs> to monthly with from Steelball Run, which you can really tell because Stone Ocean, while the quality of the art stays the same, he does get a bit lost at times. And, that's, mm. and then, of course, he's told to wrap it up a bit quickly, so then stone oceans endings infamously kind of awkward and then so yeah that's when his like george joe star novels should have show where he really wanted to go with that and just how <laughs> insanely <laughs> convoluted that is <laughs> but then like you've got like george morikawa who's been writing hajime no Ippo for like 1100 oh, chapters man. oh yeah <laughs> that guy is like <laughs> that stuck guy's insane. Like, I don't know if that is still like on a weekly basis, but Jesus. Okay, but what, what's Mura's excuse? Then he's on a monthly schedule anyway. Oh, it's, it's Idol Master, isn't it? Oh, it's Idol Master. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know, it's just uh, that the new Idol Master in game releases, so you delay your comic, but then you play the new Idol Master <laughs> game for so long, the Idol Master game comes out. So you you got to delay playing that Idol Master game to play this new one, and you know. <laughs> How do you even play Idol Master I for don't six know. months? I don't. I guess it's a rhythm game. I guess. <laughs> I don't care. Like, sorry, I, I used Idol to, Master fans. I used to... <laughs> Just no, Christ. not sorry. <laughs> Fuck all of you. <laughs> I, I, used, I used to defend Mura a bit because I thought the entire Idol Master thing was just a meme. No, uh, no. But the, oh, yeah, same. Then, then, oh, yeah, the, then the, most, the most recent hiatus he's gone on is 
like at exactly the same time the new Idol Master game releases. So it's like, hmm, maybe suspicious. not. Very suspicious. Maybe like new, new. Well, you'll release a new manga soon, and it'll just be Idol Girls, but like with really solid, weird, dark artwork. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, as long as he ends Berserk before it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Everyone uh, gets back on the boat and it sinks at the end. Well, they they need to get back to Griffith, right? Wait, what? <laughs> well, they need to, I, they need to get back behind. on the boat. Oh, God, no. <laughs> well, think about it. How do they get back? They, they, they need to get on a boat again. <laughs> Gr- Griffith rises out of the ocean. <laughs> Oh yeah, spoilers for anyone reading Berserk. There's a boat. <laughs> it's been a meme for like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> the worst thing about the boat is that if you read it just if you have if you read it now when you have all the chapters, it's not even that bad. Yeah. But waiting for it to be over must have been torture for a lot of the fans. Yes. I remember like um uh, if we talk about crazy worth at uh, work ethics uh, good Fukumoto. Oh, yeah. Like, f- it, he has, like, two long-running series, like Kaiji and Akagi, which have both been running for, like, over 25 years. And all his and, other series in between. <laughs> and yeah. all his other series that he has done in between, like Kurosawa and, like, really good stuff. It's not like uh, like the other ones would yeah. be inferior. Uh, he even... T- uh, what I find interesting is that he pauses... Um, like simply, uh, for example, Kaiji gets paused for for like one year or two years or something, and she just splits him up into paths, basically like like JoJo. Like every mm. path is a self-contained story. Um, okay, but the the last ones are like, like very much linked. But I find it interesting that he says, "Okay, I have this long-running series. I'm going to pause that for a bit, make something that is a bit smaller, then go to my other super long-running series that I have." But then he'll and he'll I, draw from that short series he's done into the next one. Because like he drew mm. from like one into some of Kaiji, didn't he? Or am I imagining things? Uh, I haven't read Kaiji. I've read like, one, like, like you mean that uh, that he gets ideas yeah. from, from different series for us? Uh, yeah, if you read um, Gintu Kin, like the silver and gold, um, you will find that the protagonist Morita is basically proto Kaiji, um, and. Uh, you find a lot of ideas that sort of develop, and you can see him by uh, experimenting with it. And famously, Gintukin apparently has a very um, like abrupt ending. Uh, I still haven't seen it, but because I think the last volume is not translated right now. Um, but I can see that, that I cannot see this story wrapping up in in one volume because there's like one gigantic arc that is so good, and you think, okay, this is where the series would end. No, there's this an additional volume and then Gintukin ends and then if you look at the dates Kaiji starts I think like something like three weeks later or something I, I can uh. imagine that he had Gintukin want to do something else and said nah I'm going to drop this and started Kaiji I can more is, than um, imagine that how old is Gintukin now Ooh, how old is that well, well it got a, a TV adaptation which is pretty nifty. Like which live action, also, I'm guessing. Yeah, a, a live action, which is not <laughs> apparently not too bad. The Japs like their live <laughs> yeah. action for Komodo. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep those Japanese housewives entertained somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, uh, Gintukin ran from uh, 1992 to 1996. Oh, it's really that old. Because I was thinking, mm-hmm. like, obviously he's got Shin Kurosawa as well, because of the end of Kurosawa, and now Shin Kurosawa is out. Mm-hmm. So, like, he may eventually, when he's done, go like, all right, here's uh, Shin Gintoken. <laughs> yeah, that is a possibility, because um, I follow the, the Gintoken official Twitter on, uh, like, well, Twitter, yeah. um, and they said that if, the, uh, when the TV series ends, that they're going to have a big announcement. Pachinko. I don't know what the big announcement is. It's pachinko. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we pachinko. It's a pachinko. <laughs> it's pachinko. Like, uh, my now guess... stage play. <laughs> like, uh, my guess is that either it's going to be a continuation of the manga, but my mm. but the biggest guess is that this arc that is just magnificent is going to be turned into a movie. 
uh, because that could easily be a standalone film. Well, it's going to be turned did... into a pachinko machine. No, <laughs> please not. <laughs> Enough pachinko machine. <laughs> <laughs> Like for the audience, like Kaiji has two seasons that is very good, but season three only exists as a pachinko cutscene, but complete with like Madhouse animation and the complete voice cast and everything, it looks good, really. But it's a pachinko machine. Like pachinko cutscenes are not a thing that I want. Well, it's like it's like how um, there's that complete recut of the Macross OP. The original one with made up to look I it probably doesn't look nicer because a lot of the stuff CG, but it looks prettier. Um and that's all just for a pachinko machine. Mm. Damn it. They could just recut and release all the pachinko stuff for the West at least, because we don't have pachinko anyway. And then they may as well use it for something else. Yeah, just just print that on a DVD or Blu-ray. Even yeah, if it's just like, like a quarter of an hour, just one hour of cutscenes, just I'll take it. Like there's so, so much stuff, like the fucking uh, Metal Gear Solid Three uh, redone in the Fox Engine. Oh thing. yeah, it's just a pachinko machine. That is a thing. <laughs> yeah. What? Wow. I think what that speaks to the most is that that I think something that anyone outside Japan will never actually get is that what we enjoy is only a part of it. Like, they have these pachinko machines, they have cafes. Like, wasn't that Pantheon's <laughs> docking announcement, like, a cafe that was come, that was being oh, yeah. brought out or something? Yeah. So, like, I think if you're in Japan and you're a big fan of these, like, when they announce, oh, hey, this pachinko machine is based on this series you like, it's like, oh, cool, I'll go and I'll play this pachinko. But, like, for us, it's like, okay. Yay. That's, not for, that's not for us, though. But... <laughs> So it's just such this bigger thing that like we won't we won't be able to experience because we are so we are outside. It's not something we can get on a torrent. It's not something you can't get a cafe off yeah. Kiss Anime. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is a thing because it's a physical thing. It's not something that yeah. can be shared. So it's it's like, just part all. of this culture, really. That I think I remember Joe from Pause and Select saying that he disagreed with Digi Bros video, video on what is anime, something because there is all this extra stuff. They call this all this other stuff anime because it's all part of the same thing. Hmm, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, one day anime will finally be destroyed and we'll just have <laughs> Pachinko. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm looking at you, Konami. God bless you, Konami. <laughs> doing God's work. You just destroyed Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but you're doing great work. <laughs> well they're working on Bomberman I mean destroying Bomberman oh Bomber Girl no. <laughs> but what about the waifus Boris <laughs> <laughs> oh the waifus oh damn okay so we got here from um, manga artist work schedules yeah. I think that's Two pachinko a machines. pretty good time Tink to no, wrap right? up <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> Like, have have you guys seen that one picture where an anonymous uh, manga artist posted his schedule? No, I haven't. Um, I'm gonna share this in the chat, but basically, everything's yeah, I'm gonna like put it, put it on screen. Uh, marked with colors, and essentially, he has like three hours of free time per week. Oh, I think I may have seen this. Then that sounds it's familiar, at least. Yes. Basically, everything else is just working on the manga. Oh, and he has meal breaks, I guess. That's a thing. Oh, and meetings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah, I think Oda has killed at least one manga artist indirectly. Like, yeah, I, I remember thing um because One Piece is just immensely popular in uh, Germany, we have all these additional... um like uh, extra books that he has put out with background information, even stuff where he draws his own apartment and shows uh, how things work. Like these One Piece red, blue, deep red, uh, green, yellow. We have all of these. And I remember saying that uh, Oda has four assistants. And then I remember reading in a different book about Naruto that, um, uh, that the Naruto mangaka has ten assistants. 
So basically, yeah, you can see Oda needs four additional people, while others need ten additional people to meet the schedule. Oda's not human, though. <laughs> How does he <laughs> do <laughs> it? He's like a fucking Rohan. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll go insane one day. That's yeah. I hope the same that, uh, as you all said, that he has somewhere safe where, where the whole script is inside. <laughs> So it's just if something happens to him, we have at least an ending to One Piece. Yeah, it's just a piece of paper that says the real One Piece is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a treasure. The end. <laughs> uh, I think that about wraps it up. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, you wanna, do you wanna wrap up then? Sure, why not? <laughs> this was the second filler arc of the Garcast. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> We're good at rambling. The, the real girl cast was the friends we made along the way. Yada yada. <laughs> yada yada. <laughs> okay. So, like, see, see this uh, this episode as an additional little island put between <laughs> the bigger islands. We're gonna have to write the ending of Garcast down on a piece of paper somewhere. <laughs> I can put it in my new disc. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Announcement news from Garcast. I'm off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a little New bit less pathetic Gar- in my life. Garcast is going on hiatus for Idol Master playing. <laughs> <laughs> Expect uh, a new Gar Let's Play, which just would be all of all of us playing Idol Master <laughs> 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 for hours on end. A competitive idol master esports. You'll catch us at the next Evo. Trust, you know. <laughs> daily episodes, daily streams. <laughs> is, all idol master. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't. Oh, there are people that, that stream daily. Yeah, that's their job. No, I mean competitive idol master. Oh, <laughs> anything can be competitive, Boris. Yeah. You, you clearly you have to believe into, it. into gaming. <laughs> You know, they let anything be competitive these days. They let uh, Street Fighter V be at Evo. That's it's pretty crazy. Mm. That's a hot take. It's a hot take. Anyway, let's end this before we say more stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> at exactly late. an hour. We just hit it like three seconds ago. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that That's accounting for uh, no editing. From when the long pauses. Oh, yes. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't tell our what secrets. <laughs> Fucking exposed. Just... We ended our podcast. <laughs> it's, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, so, back to the comments I made about oddly aimless authors. Uh, check this out. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's a meta joke. It's a meta joke. I can write my own anime next. <laughs> Someone please end this. I'm running out of time. <laughs> but, uh, I would say uh, it's your new light novel. My microwave can't be this aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, oh, do man. I do I fuck the microwave? <laughs> uh, that's, oh, that's the real question. You... You just marry it, and then the, the, it's, it's yeah. implied. It's implied. <laughs> well, you keep it PG thirteen. Oh, you're just yeah, part of the microwave's harem. I mean, uh, it'll flash forward in time, and the microwave and I will have children. <laughs> so that that's that's the implication, I guess. Oh God, I I hope people get this joke. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is this reference isn't lost on people. <laughs> I'm going to link that in the description. <laughs> You just flash a picture of of me on screen posing with the microwave. (laughs) (laughs) Will do. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, so this has been the filler episode uh, of Garcast, or our humble beginnings. How did we get here? So uh, this has been uh, Alistair. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Boris. Bye. (laughs) Tom. Help. (laughs) (laughs) And me, Eleanor. So uh, have a good day, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye.